Hey, I'm back. All right, this is not a time elapse video. This is a regular one. So we'll see how this one turns out. I'm still playing with some purples. It's just kind of a fun Sunday night kind of thing to do. Uh, I am looking into starting classes online. So hopefully in the next month or so, I'll have an idea of when that's coming about. Um, all right, let me get started. So again, this is Rose Molly. It's Norwegian art form. You've already heard me say this, but I'm going to start with a C stroke here in the corner. Rose Molly is an art form that is based on C strokes and S strokes. It's a very organic type thing. Mm, I'm not happy with my brush here. I want something a little bigger, maybe. There we go. Let's see what we can do here. A little bit. Oh, that might work too. I'm very indecisive tonight. Anyway, it's been a long weekend. All right, so as you can see, I already started with some C strokes. And that there was a nice long S stroke that I built off the back of it. As I've said previously, purples are not a normal color to use in Rose Molly, and typically I stick to. Oh, the blues, the reds, the greens. But it is fun to play with other colors. Here we go. So C's and S's. These all come about and form a cohesive pattern. Now, I've been asked many times when I'm doing something like this, and especially this style, which is very free-flowing. I typically have a an idea of where I want to go with it. Um, the canvas is much quicker um, and my free flowing than when I'm working on a wooden piece. The majority of my pieces are done on wood. So, for example, I have a nice little box here that I have done in the Holland doll style. So that's a very symmetrical pattern, a little more opaque. Um, so those take a little more planning, and depending on when people ask for, and I do a lot of commission work, so when they ask for a particular style or particular colors, particular background, so that kind of dictates where a piece is going to go. All right, so I have a nice little shape there. I kind of feel like I want to put a, a little line here. Sometimes it's fun to have some straight lines coming in. Okay, yeah. Kind of gives a frame of where we want to go. Well, it's pretty close. I'll use my finger here to kind of guide my brush as I go along. And, you know, I'm not quite happy with that. So the nice thing is what I'm working with is acrylics my water here. I'm going to come down. So with acrylics, if I have an issue, I can use water to kind of help myself out. Ah, that was kind of fun. I like that. It's a lot of experimentation at times as you're working. So it's not always going to be a perfect thing. I can bring that line up more down. So this canvas I had kind of uh, taken a little time, kind of. I did take time to put a little purple highlighting background on it. So here we go, a little C, a little S. Put a nice happy little flower there. Working in different shades of purple. It's nice to have some gold. So as I'm making a lot of noise as I'm working on this table here, this table has seen a lot of work on it, as you can see, by my uh, variety of colors and drops of paint and everything else. Anyway, about, I was going to say, about 18, 19 years ago, I switched from oil paint to acrylic. This is typically a oil-driven art form, 
because it's a wet on wet technique. So for example, do a little of this here. You can just nice little shading into it here. A wet on wet technique would be that you're using the wet background of your colors that you have down and you bring your detail work on top of it and you have a bit of a blending going on. So this is still damp which is nice so I can come back kind of bring my color in bringing more of a blue in this time on top of it just adding it in and dragging along. I put a medium on my brush at times uh, sometimes I use water. The water dries too quickly and the medium that I use is a combination of glaze, retarder, and flow. Now my wet palette here has water underneath it on the um, paper towel that's underneath my palette so that helps keep my paint fresh. There we go. Put it already in there. Pull in there. We'll come this way. And when I detail a piece, I don't always follow it directly. Because when you look out in nature and you look at the flowers and leaves and everything out there, though so you're always coming down to the the stem line and such flowers and everything are kind of in a wonderful jumble and you don't see every distinct detail or line of what's out there. All right, so this has a nice feel to it, uh, something I've forgotten to do. So when I'm working with acrylics, again, that dries very quickly, I typically leave a wet paper towel out. When I'm not using the brush, I put it in that wet paper towel. If I'm working for a long time, I'll have plastic wrap around that so that they will truly stay wet. All right, let's see what I can do here. All right, I'm working for a while. I think what I'll do is try to get all the baseline work done on this for today, and then tomorrow I'll finish up the line work, the detailing. Okay. Let's see if I can bring a nice little C stroke up. And I'm fading it into the background. When I work on canvas, I use the rougher texture of it to kind of give this flow into it. I can use it to make it give more depth behind there. Again, as I said earlier, most of my work is done on wood, but there's something very fun and freeing to play around with different backgrounds and different effects with your brush. So I don't think I'm going to put a line on this side, so I'm going to use that, my stroke work, to kind of give it a balance. Let's see. So now I have two things going in the same direction there. I gotta change it a little bit. So instead, give it a little flower end here. Bring it this way. Give it some more S strokes, C strokes. Now I can add some gold in there. Give it a little more variety. You want to make a piece as interesting as possible. It's almost like you want to see different things every time. All right, let's see what else I can do here. All right, go here. Sometimes it's funny as I'm working hard to know how much I'm repeating myself from past videos. I don't want to repeat everything that I've done before. 
I don't want to bore anybody as you're watching this, and I hope I don't. I hope you're enjoying seeing and seeing the effect that comes out. I will work on getting better at my production of this. I'm going to try to get one of my kids to help, help take video as I work. But, you know, this is all an experimentation. And I'm glad you guys have been watching and following as I play around with the ideas that I have here. Okay. Well, I think that kind of gives a nice basis for tonight. Let's see. Can you get a good look at that? There we go. All right. Well, I'm going to say good night for now, and then tomorrow I will finish this.